Thanks everyone for being here. I'm part of a team of about 20 authors where we look at all kinds of observational records of Arctic climate. We, we take in everything like rivers, temperatures, snow cover. And so I'm gonna quickly take you through uh, our updated summary survey of these observational records. How is the Arctic climate changing it according to observations? The Arctic is getting wetter. Precipitation rates are increasing. Snowfall is part of the precipitation. It's, as you can see in the brown areas, actually decreasing across the North Atlantic. Why? Because there's more rain falling instead of snow. The largest trend in Arctic precipitation is the increasing rainfall trend. So the overall precipitation increasing, driven by more rain at the expense of snow on average. There are some hot spots uh, where snow cover is increasing, like uh, along Greenland, Svalbard. Uh, but again, the overall uh, pattern looks like this. Um, it's a wetter Arctic. The temperature increase annually, as you can see, is, is largest in the Barents Sea sector. This is where the Gulf Stream uh, circulation kind of ends. This is the margin of the sea ice. It's a very dynamic part of the Arctic and it's uh, warming the most at the annual scale. If we look at the, what I call the warm season, that's uh, June through September, it's warming at a lesser rate, partly because extra energy goes into converting ice into water. That's a latent heat sink. Uh, it's the cold season, October through May, where the most warming is. And that is a, a time of year um, where it's actually, uh, in some ways, even a much more dynamic system. Uh, stronger uh, storms, uh, stronger atmospheric circulation, and, and some of the largest uh, permafrost changes are happening in this cold season uh, because it's warming up so much at, at that time of the year. We had a close look at how quickly is the Arctic warming compared to the globe and using new, even more authorita authoritative data sets, uh, we find that at the annual scale, uh, the Arctic since 1971 is warming at 3.3 times the globe. Seasonally, it's, it's four times the, the global increase in the cold season, October through May, and about two in the warm season. So again, the, this cold season, October through May, is when most of the change is occurring. Wildfire, there's a non-surprising coincidence of extreme wildfire when temperatures are extremely high. Uh, just a record from Alaska, and here's a, a record from Finland showing the same thing. It's not every year, it, it, Temperature alone is not the only predictor of wildfire, but um, the extreme high warm summers uh, are when the most fires occur. The tundra is getting greener. It's uh, predictable by the temperature increase and, and the wetter conditions on average. It doesn't mean that the Arctic is wet in the summer. It can be very dry, um, but, but overall um, it's a wetter Arctic and it's also a shrubifying Arctic, more woody stems uh, growing up uh, uh, taller. The willows are, are getting quite big in the Arctic. Um, the Northern limit here, this is what you see in this map is uh, north of tree lines. So this is all the Arctic tundra that's greening, but it is uh, greening to the, the south of tree line as well. Arctic sea ice declining by more than 45% in the period of high quality satellite observations. And the ice sea ice volume decreasing by half. We've lost half of the sea ice volume in the last 43 years. The Arctic rivers are discharging more. 
they're flowing 8% more than they were 45 years ago. It's also significant because this Arctic Ocean Basin, it's 1% of the global ocean by volume. So it's not a very deep ocean, but with these great rivers discharging into the Arctic Ocean, it's 10% it's, um, of global river flows going into a volume that's only 1% of the global ocean. So these freshwater dynamics are really transformative for the oceanography of, of the Arctic Ocean. And finally, our survey includes land ice, that's the glaciers, ice caps, the Greenland ice sheet. Uh, the Arctic is the largest single source of sea level rise globally. And in each of these decades that's illustrated by the gray lines, in every decade going forward, there's an increase in the rate of sea level contribution. In other words, an acceleration. And that makes the future sea level contribution from land ice ice sheets especially, very difficult to uh, project into the future. Ice sheet modeling is a, a, a very tricky business. And so at best we can say at these levels of CO2, the world needs to prepare itself for abrupt sea level rise. Thanks for your attention. Look forward to the discussion.